Okay, so welcome to the eighth meeting of the DAPS working group. Quite a few people are out today because we Denver. Um, but uh, maybe we can get started with uh, status updates. Um, as always, we start by uh, restating this uh, working group's goals. And from a high level, our, our main goal is to establish verified retrieval as the norm for uh, retrieving seeds on the web. And uh, obviously, as part of that, we want to decrease the reliance on trusted gateways and to generally just improve the experience uh, of dApps on IPFS, both for developers and for users. So with that, we have uh, quite a, a big initiative we're working on. This is the Service Worker Gateway. And uh, I'll drop a link to the repo just in case folks haven't seen it. Um, so I'll, I'll drop that into the meeting notes. I should be sharing my screen, really. Share my screen. Let's see. I think this is the one. Right on. So here we are. Um, this is the render view. We're in the eighth meeting. So yeah, the service worker gateway repo, that's in the IPFS shipyard um, uh, org. And uh, just before we get into the nitty gritty details, this is essentially uh, an in-browser little app um, to, uh, uh, is using Helio in order to retrieve and verify everything in the browser. And the aim is for this to replace trusted gateways. Um, and so we already have this deployed um, onto inbrowser.dev, but maybe I, I'll pause there and um, Lytle, maybe you can share a bit more about what's the current state of uh, inbrowser.dev. And um, yeah, all right. Handing yeah. it to you. Yeah. Um, I think like uh, it, it, the gist is that the inbrowser.dev, uh, it's a drop-in replacement for uh, subdomain gateways at least the direction we want uh, to iterate on it and improve it. Right now, it's not ready yet. There's uh, things which do not work, like hunts, some domain, uh, some DNS TLDs may not work. Uh, maybe that there are some issues with uh, edge cases around duck traversal, uh, or it may not be that efficient when it uh, opens uh, big directories, uh, but we are getting there. And we already have a bunch of uh, those problems solved in in open PRs. But TLDR, if you know how dweb dot uh, dweb works, uh, this is like a drop in replacement for people. The difference is that on dweb dot link, uh, you got origin isolation. Each website has an own uh, origin based on the domain uh, and so following subdomain convention. But the CAD verification happens on a backend server run by someone else. Uh, IP shipyard uh, those days, uh, but with in browser.dev, um, your browser only gets a very small static HTML and JS with code that does all the retrieval uh, trustlessly and verifies hashes in your browser on your client. So that shifts the cost uh, of verification from the backend gateway to the edge client, but what the edge client gets in return for that additional work is that it does not have to trust the specific gateway. So now it can like fetch from different backends. And then in, if it uses in, in the future, when it uses delegated routing, it can like fetch data directly from some like content providers. Uh, and there's like a demo. Demo uh, is of course picked um, uh, a very <laughs> the thing that works, which is a simple website, uh, but it's our dog's website, which is like significant amount of like pages you can like click through and everything renders uh, hopefully uh, uh, just fine. And uh, the, for people who are interested where we are specifically, uh, this the, this epic describes like the set of things we want to deliver before we call it like ready to be that like drop-in replacement. Um, yeah, um, I think that's the that's the update. Um, so it's not production ready. That's why we use .dev, but uh, that's how you can follow this development. 
And another cool thing is that everything is cached in the browser. So it's kind of like it makes a lot of these websites local first in the sense that once the blocks for them are fetched, that the second reload doesn't actually have to do any round trips. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and also like uh, maybe like the idea is that it will be or the intention is to make it like way, way easier and way, way less expensive for people to like host their own gateway. Um, so here we have this like a public gateway where you can load uh, arbitrary like CADs and IPNS names and DNS links. Uh, but for example, like subdomain gateway looks at the host header and based on that, it knows which like content to load. Uh, if that, I, what we also want to have, make it like useful for people to add more resiliency to their websites. So if you have a website which has a DNS link and instead of like actually like hosting your page, you just drop in the static payload, um, you could get like updates, uh, use the DNS link or other me uh, similar mechanism for updates and the payload returned by your server is static. So it can be cached by CDNs, you don't need to uh, spend much for hosting and every like actual retrieval happens uh, through a service worker. So the idea is that it's not just for public gateways, but the same thing could be used by websites and a, web a website and a DAP, it's like the same thing. It uses the same set of web technologies. So the idea is that this could be like the directly used by DAP developers. The only gap, and I think it's listed on, on the MVP list, is that we we need to have a solution where your own DAP wants to uh, register some hand service worker handlers, because you can have only one service worker. And if you loaded your thing through service worker, you need to figure out uh, how to plug in additional routes. Um, so that's like a small complication we'll have to figure out down the road. Lato, can you can you elaborate a little bit? I'm not sure I understood mm -hmm. what you meant there by so what does it look like then for uh say I'm publishing a DAP or whatever? Mm -hmm. uh, how do I increase the resilience in this instance using this? Yeah, so the uh, the the idea is that instead of having HTTP server which just returns your like your website, the HTTP server would return the same static payload that we have on in browser.dev. Okay. And that payload would look at window location. It would see, oh, I'm on this domain name. I will see if the, this domain name has DNS link. Um, oh, it has DNS link. So I will register a service worker and load, like, re load the page from, my, uh, from that DNS link and return to the user. So that's right. kind of like... It, it adds resiliency because just like you said, once it's loaded, you it's like cached locally. You can also like, you are not depending on a SQL backend, you can fall back to other backends. So that adds a way of adding resiliency to your DAP or uh, website. And obviously this doesn't sort of sidestep the need to make sure that you're publishing your SID properly to the network. Whether that's through the amino network index or pinning service or whatnot, you still need to have that published properly. Um, yeah, but this sort of gives an extra benefit on on sort of the consumer side, the retrieval. Of yeah, it. yeah, and and I think like um, may, there are various ways of bridging the gap. And in the previous calls, we we did, we we had the very useful demos from Ed and others. Uh, so if you have a app. You, or maybe you have like a wallet uh, like a browser extension. That extension could then uh, be a means of uh, verifying that initial payload. And, and that closes the gap end to end before we have a better solution. Yeah. Do you think there's a value uh, in, in getting into the details around HAMT um, in this session? Or because I know that uh, Dean started a PR and then um, uh, Mr. Aching Brain. Mm -hmm. uh, opened another PR in Helia, uh, which fixed a fair bit of this, um, at least the, the traversal. I can, mm -hmm. I can like briefly maybe like tell what, what what's the underlying problem. Uh, the underlying problem is that if you have, we have like a block limit uh, on peer-to-peer -peer public swarm in IPFS. So effectively uh, the, the single block is maximum around like two megabytes. Let's call it that. And um, 
what happens if you have a, like if you have a directory on IPFS, that's effectively a block which has a list of files and the file names and CIDs of those files, right? So you can imagine like, oh, I can have a directory which is so big uh, that does not fit. It takes more than two megabytes. So, oh, I have a block which cannot be exchanged over all transports. Um, so we have a, a mechanism for sharding, which is based on HAMD. Uh, I will not go into the details, but for example, the thing that you shared in IPLD Explorer, the Wikipedia, um, for example, like Wikipedia, the slash wiki directory in Wikipedia. It's a, a big directory. It has, I don't know, English Wikipedia, 20 million of uh, pages plus. Uh, so that surely does not fit in a single block. And that's uh, sharded. So it's uh, uh, it adds a multiple additional layers of abstraction between parent and children. Uh, so uh, that each layer, like the blocks in each layer, are uh, under the limit. I think I I don't think know if that's uh, the best uh, non technical way of describing it, but. It's just a way of avoiding fetching huge, huge, huge uh, directory listing uh, just to find a small index HTML somewhere on the path inside of that directory. So it ex is uh, uh, especially important in a browser where you feel every millisecond or every like byte that has to be fetched. So for example, if you open slash wiki of English Wikipedia, you don't want to fetch like all list of all articles on Wikipedia. You only want to get as fast as possible to that like subset of a tree where the index HTML is. Um, and I think that's the gist of the work that we are we have fixes uh, in, in progress to make sure that when you open uh, or load asset from a big directory, in a browser through service worker that happens, uh, what happens in the background, it fetches the minimum number of blocks to get you from the root of the DAG to that index HTML or, or a JPEG file. Um, because like every block counts, every, every like, request counts. Um, and it's important Can I pause not you just there? for- mm -hmm. Yeah. So my question is, will the sort of the, path that you traverse in order to get into the uh where the index might be because if if you have a, a hunt a hunt charted directory the index dot html is obviously in this case it's not in the root block and so you need to traverse the dag is is that path always deterministic in the sense that mm -hmm. Do you, can yeah. you know in advance where you need to traverse because you have a bunch of links right it's charted mm -hmm. into many shards yeah, is it really yeah. just a matter of like doing a hash of the file name that you're looking for in this case index.html in order to determine where which one of the links you need to traverse? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's it, if I remember correctly, it's not a hash of the file; it's hash of the file name. Yeah, yeah, uh, and and, and the, the, the details, you know, but it, it's it's a it's a more, more uh, a special flavor of Merber free. So you effectively have a hash of a name, and then you take uh, like two first character, characters per level. I think that's the okay. overly simplified uh, description. And that gives you a determinism because you know, oh, if it's like index HTML, it lands under those letters. And if you have your directory is bigger and bigger and bigger, you only need to like get more and more, more layers, uh, but effectively, you know, there's the, the path will be deterministic across that. Yeah, the trick is okay. to make sure the JS code uh, is smart enough to leverage that and only fetch a minimum set of blocks. And we hit up uh, those problems in Goland. We think we resolved them before, uh, but that's like uh, especially important optimization for the web browser. Because if you have, uh, let's say, 10K of JPEGs, uh, a big directory full of JPEGs, uh, they may be small, but to get to those small JPEGs, you need to traverse the DAG, which is pretty big. And unless you do that correctly, you will be overfetching. Yeah, I, I dropped a message actually in the IPFS implementers uh, channel just to ask about more details about the hand implementation, just because I was trying to wrap my head around it. 
um like i mean just uh, as example and i don't want to like derail this working group because it, it's not really strictly this the topic here but i mean even if you look at this so i'm looking now at a single block and um you know from a unix fs perspective this is uh, the type of this message is a hamped uh, directory shard and it already has the links but these links are actually sort of in the dag pb in the sort of the parent block right um and so i guess my question was now how do i uh like what's first of all what's in this data um what's in the data field that was to me like a mystery um but again i i, I don't want to derail this here we can we can like do take this async um I, I can have a, I, can, I have like a very short answer which may be useful so there's like one thing okay uh the block you show it's just a regular duck pb block there's no magic yeah. here uh, the, the the only difference is the type the type tells you this is a block for a humped uh it's a part of yeah. a hump so that tells you like oh file names are like prefixed by that hash by and that helps you navigate the hump uh, what's in a data field, it's like a regular Unix FS, and we have a draft on this over spec, uh, which I'll send, send on chat. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I'm already yeah. looking at that pull request. This yeah, is the one that, from Joropose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and there's like a very, uh, there's a section about hams. We, we probably need to refine it to be more like humane language, but uh, uh, I think oh, like oh, maybe- You were like, saying that, the, what is the prefix, did you say? Uh, those like two two first characters in the file name of that uh, dog you show, like the files of the children, their names have a prefix. Those let two letters or numbers. Ah, okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. But the, I think like for this group, uh, I think it was like a, a useful exercise in that: do people who use IPFS on the web should they should they care about this? Well, well, only if they do advanced things, right? So the thing is like, the, if you just want to publish a website on IPFS, it may have a lot of JPEGs. And uh, should you like care about those details? Well, no, that's why we created a verified fetch as an abstraction uh, that kind of like hides that uh, away. It uses Helia and it uses uh, Unix FS uh, with a hump and we, we are making it better. So it like, it's not overfetching uh, blocks. Uh, but I think that that shows that okay, there there's like a lot of complexity there, but we can like hide it away, and and users and developers don't need to worry about oh how the humps work or how do I do the chunking. Um, I'm trying to record the uh, the Unix FS exporter already only loads the minimum number of blocks to traverse a hump. The bug was that the Unix the Helio Unix FS module was not using it to traverse the hand. So the PR that I opened uses the Unix of S exporter and now everyone's happy. Um, on the, tell me to shut up, but the, the prefixes for the hashes, right? The way it works is you have, you have a spec, like this murmur hash is like a special kind of hash because it's consumable. Um, the the idea being like consumable? You, I'm about to tell you. So you, you hash, you hash a file, right? So index.html, so you hash the file. Um, and when you hash it, you consume some bytes from the hash itself. So were you to hash it again, you would end up with a different hash for the same input value. Um, this is important because it will come onto what's in that data block. Um, so when you, when you hash index.html, you get a hash, you can see it there, A0. So you take the, you take the prefix, like the first two characters, like it's configurable, but it's essentially always the first two characters. So then you've you've got in your hand the hash prefix a zero and index.html. Now, if you're going to add another file, script.js, and you hash that, and the hash was a zero, blah 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 blah. You throw away the blah blah blah, so you got that a zero. So now you have a collision because you have index.html and you have script.js, which both uh, hash to the same uh, the same prefix. So you remove a0 index.html, you create a link to a new DAG PB node, so another like a subhand 
then you rehash index.html and you rehash script.js. And because you've consumed some bytes from the hash while you were creating the initial layer of the hand, they will then hash with a different prefix. So you could, in theory, end up with the same prefix again, but you would, you would just repeat this operation until you didn't. And due to the way the hash is put together, when you're consuming the bytes, you'll change, you'll change the output every time. So in order to recreate the hand, so if you want to, if you want to traverse the hand without loading all the blocks, you have to be able to recreate those hashes. So if you're adding other files to the hands when you're creating this multi-layered tree, you're consuming the bytes all the time. So if you want to find index.html in a hand, you have to know the state of the uh, the state of the hash when you hash index.html, and that's what's stored in the database. So we have this this sparse tree, um, which represents. There's like a bit field that represents the current state of of the of the tree and the hash, which you can then reread in to then skip straight to hashing index index.html, getting the right prefix. And then you can look up in the tree, you know, is there a child with this prefix? Great. Is it prefix index.html? Great. I found the file. Otherwise, you descend to the next layer of the hand and repeat the operation um, because you've you found a sub hand where two files previously hashed to the, with the same prefix. And you just repeat this operation until you descend and eventually you'll find the file. Told you, you should have told me to stop. Can you just recap? So what was in the data field, the, the data field, it sounds like it yeah. contains some metadata, like the murmur. Yeah. It stores the state of the hash. So the, the hash in okay. itself is stateful and it stores the state of the hash when you finish creating the tree. Mm -hmm. I will anyway. say that this should be in the spec PR, which I linked. If it's not there, that's a by sign. <laughs> I mean, here, yeah, yeah. Here it even has data dot data dot data, which was like, okay, is there another level of nesting which I wasn't aware of? Um, but uh, we can take that async. Uh, I think at this point, there's like not much value. I'm, I'm at least not. Uh, I don't think it would be much, uh, think. okay. So, I mean, just coming back to the Epic, uh, that you created, um, I guess the main question that I think would be good to sort of flag here is to in browser.link, are we automatically deploying main off that repo? Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry. dev. Oh yeah. So right now we, uh, cause we have, uh, like dot link is supposed to be like the production when we, it's like a uh, feature complete and dot dev, uh, is, uh, supposed to be, uh, continuous deployment from the main branch right now, both are the same. Uh, but once we make a release, we will kind of like switch to the similar cadence that we have in Kubo or rainbow when, when you make a release. And there's like a tag and only like tags will be deployed to dot link and dot dev will be a rolling one. But right now we both are rolling ones because we are still iterating fast. Um, yeah. And uh, right now it's deployed through Flick and DNS link just because it's like convenient for developers. Uh, but uh, it's not, uh, you can just take a pre-built artifact and just drop it in Nginx or Kadi or any other static HTTP server. And as long as you have a, a TLS set up, it should work. Uh, if you want a proper origin isolation, then you, you know you need to have a TLS cert for uh, subdomain wildcards, but that's about it. Uh, and, and yeah, the, the idea is that we want to have docs so people can very easily deploy it themselves. And we most likely will be publishing a DNS link. So you, uh, so if you run uh, IPFS gateway as a backend, you effectively can like just follow our production. You don't need to redeploy anything. 
uh, if you are okay with that, uh, or you can just uh, deploy a static version manually. Um, but yeah, we want to have bucket docs for that. So that's like the idea is to to drop the cost down so you can just host a small HTML on a Raspberry Pi and not even put that behind Cloudflare and it should be fine because you only people people hit you only once to get the service worker code and that's it. Great. So I think with that, maybe we can just move to verified fetch. Um, I don't think there's much to discuss, Alex, but uh, maybe you want to share like what sort of needs to happen for it to be released. Like, is there anything that you want to flag there or mention? I think I think we're pretty much good to go. Like, I think we should merge this um, hamped fix. But like, as, as far as the API is concerned, I think we're kind of feature complete. Uh, initially, like so, Lidl um, suggested the, you know, like parsing the URLs in more ways so that you can you can pass in a regular like HTTP gateway URL with a hash in it somewhere, like, you know, CID in it somewhere, and you can parse it out and then turn that into a, a verified fetch retrieval. Um, but we can do that after the fact because uh, I don't. That's not going to affect the output of anything. It would just means we we will accept more kinds of URLs as strings, which we you know, so we can ship that afterwards. So I think. I think One question I guess I do have is like, do we want to do we want it to live in the Helium monorepo forever? Should we move it to its own thing, like the service gateway and and that kind of thing first? What's your take? It's already. Um, it's a. I think because I think it's a bit of an outlier in the monorepo, and it depends on everything. Um, and you kind of want from the user experience, you you'd want a bit of stability and and that in it. So to me, it says it's more like an application that uses Helia rather than being part of Helia itself. So you might want to deploy it somewhere with a, you know, a lock file, like publish it with a shrink wrap or, or something like that, just so that users are kind of uh, shielded from the chaos of, of NPM sometimes, um, in which case it's definitely an outlier in the monorepo. Yeah, I think like uh, I had this thought that um, there are like two things which we want to resolve before moving away, just in case, j just to make like maybe like a single pull request with a fix rather than multiple ones. One was uh, Hamts, and the second one was around um, DNS resolvers being able to uh, like pass custom one, uh, one uh, custom DOH endpoint. I think those are were the only th uh, things that I thought, oh, maybe it'd be easier. But I I I, th I agree that it's like matured enough to be in a separate repo. I, I don't think that's yeah. So the the um the DNS resolvers PR went in yesterday, and like you know, as a data point, that only touched the verified fetch repo. Um, you know, sorry, package within the mono repo. It didn't require coordinating changes to other modules. And the hamped one is just a fix in the Unix FS module. So even now we're not we're not necessarily touching multiple packages with a, a single PR. Yeah. So, so, so sounds like a plan. Um I think given the there's like a bunch of team uh, this week on it, then I don't know if we want to like make waves. Uh, maybe like we can discuss the extracting next week. Can do. If we're going to ship version one, it would be nice to have the release notes in the new repo. Is version one sh shipping like uh, this week, or what's the plan? Yeah, well, like I was saying, I think we should merge the hand fix, but after that, I think we should just ship it. Okay. Hey. If you if you want uh, or need help with uh, like GitHub setup, like ping me, DM me, uh, we can do that sooner, right? Yeah, 
I don't think it's a big of a deal as long as service worker gateway is more or less stable. Speaking of uh, Git org uh, and, and so on, does it make sense for us to move the service worker gateway into the IPFS org? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in general, the IPFS shipyard uh, at some point this year, either things will get moved to uh, upstream, like IPFS org or similar, or it will get archived uh, or handed over to a maintainer to move it outside to like, their personal account or create a separate org. Because um, it's a uh, it's in between, it's like a community org, but then the community uh, does not have like full ownership or does not feel like they have this ownership. And then the, if maintainer disappears, uh, it's like a silent, uh, like English exit where they don't uh, engage anymore. Uh, but if it's in, in your like private repo, you, you you effectively need to make sure people don't bother you anymore. What? So... Sorry, or what? <laughs> I believe it's called a Polish exit, but... <laughs> We could, I don't know. I, I'm very bad with proper, so I apologize if I. <laughs> yeah, it's called a it's called a French exit in the UK. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was pretty sure there's like a, it's also like I and think I, in, in, yeah. I know for a English, fact the French call it an English exit. Or, yeah, it's the yeah. same proverb, but the name of a country is different depending on the language you use. <laughs> it's never your own. Yeah, it's never your own exactly. <laughs> Yep. Uh, so I think yeah, we 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 should okay. move. I I did not move. Uh, I did not move it also before uh, it's Denver because we have automatic deployment with Flick, and we also yeah. want to migrate Flick, and it's tied to the repo. And history told us that it's not very. It, it's a bit brittle, or at least it was a bit brittle. So we need to effectively uh, to coordinate migration. So I'd say not this week. All right. Um, I think that's that's all we have on the agenda. I know there's a bunch uh, of uh, folks who've joined us. Uh, if there's anything you want to discuss, now is the moment. Otherwise, I think we can uh, wrap it up. All right. Cool. Thank you all for joining. Um, and with that, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Stop recording.